uh, Paula will be starting starting that now. <laughs> um, and Paula is going to be uh, reviewing the um, questions in the chat box. Questions in the chat box. Thank you. <laughs> um, so let's start. Uh, I have a couple screens here. Uh, so I might my head might be turning to look at something else uh, to pull it over into the screen that you can see. Um, so as this is going to be interactive, uh, I want you all to be uh, try to pay attention, not pay attention. I'm sorry, try to get involved. Oh, obviously, I want you to pay attention, um, get involved in uh, in what we're talking about uh, there. It was thinking there was something else that I was going to say, but I can't think of what it was. So let's dive in. So today we're going to be talking about uh, knowing your numbers. Today's objective is going is understanding basic financial data to help analyze and direct the operation of school nutrition programs with fiscal responsibility and integrity. Um, I a lot of these slides have has come from the ICN. Uh, it's from their online course, Financial Management, and I have the link there for you uh, if you're interested in more information on that. Um, a couple things. Uh, some of you are uh, new uh, directors. Some of you have been here forever. I see some of you and I wonder, why are you here? Like, you know this. You could teach this class. I see you laughing, Dave and Tina. <laughs> Um, so, but anyway, so, uh, <laughs> so here we go, but I want to say, don't panic if this is new financial management is a process and it's, and it's not going to happen overnight. Um, we're just looking at one way to look at things. There are multiple different ways to, there are different ways to do, uh, what we're talking about today. The, uh, most of the information, like I said, is coming from the ICN. Um, it's an online course um, that you can take. Um, and the ICN stands for Institute of Child Nutrition Resource Training Center. Um, SNA has training as well that talks about um, a lot of what we're talking about today. So just a couple of other resources for you. And we do have other resources as well on our website. And I'll be uh, showing that to you as well today. So hopefully, uh, Paula, I know Paula sent you a um, worksheet, a, a spreadsheet. Hopefully you got that. If not, um, that's going to be our activity activity pages that we're going to be talking about today. If you didn't get it, that's fine because I have a slide that will show what we're talking about and you can just get a piece of paper and handwrite that information. All right. So... If time allows, like I said, I want this to be interactive, so I'm really not sure how far we're going to get in this presentation. My plan is to, if we don't, uh, if we don't finish, then we'll do a part two, and I'll add to that. Uh, add to the part two. Um, May is my next uh, webinar, and I will. We will finish then. So we're going to be looking today at sources of revenue and categories of expenses found on your annual, annual financial report. From the revenue and expenses, we will calculate, calculate the percent of total revenue attributed to each category. Then we'll look at the percent of revenue spent for labor and food. The last item we'll look at is how to calculate meals per labor hour. And again, I'm not going to rush through it. Uh, I want you to be asking questions and I'm going to be asking questions of you and hopes that you are, will participate. And as we're working through the activities. Okay, next slide. Okay, so ne this next slide is uh, from your annual financial report. And Hopefully this is going to work. <laughs> I am going to, I wanted to go to, um, let me just 
I want us to go to um, I can't even remember what this is called. Isn't that, there we go. Here we go. There, CMP Web. Um, I am logging as state, so I'm going to look a little bit different, but we are going. Are you seeing what I'm mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. <laughs> We're going to, I want you to pull program from program 2023, where 24 hasn't fit is not finished yet. Uh, so we want to get the annual financial report that you have already completed. Um, so you're going to go to your forms tab and then the annual financial report is listed right there and you can click the <clears throat> eyeball and you can print it or keep it on your page or however you want to refer to that. So that is where you're going to be getting that. All right. So next slide. Different change? No. So again, uh, here is your uh, list of expenditures. And again, I'm going to use uh, the classifications that we have on your annual, annual financial report. Um, that way, um, it's consistent with what we have been talking about in past webinars. Uh, if you, again, if you want to keep that up on your screen um, on your end, it may help with um, the next activity that we're going to do, just so you can kind of visualize where you, where we're pulling the numbers from. So our first activity is calculating operating ratios and activity one. So you do need your annual financial report and the, the calculation is going to be the category costs divided by your total revenue. And what I'm going to do is I am going to pull up <clears throat> our, actually, I think it's on the next page too. All right. So activity one. So a couple things to remember when completing the operation, your operating ratios, ratios. Um, is the time frame that you're doing this must be the same um, for revenue and expenses, obviously for consistency. In my example, I use the same categories in the AFR. You can see that food expenses, labor and benefits, equipment, and other. And I did combine the two equipment categories into one. You can break it down further. Um, you can break down your um, labor and benefits as labor, and then another line is benefits. Again, the equipment, you could separate in the two categories, um, and other, you could even separate your other categories, non-food, repair and maintenance, to just to name a few. It's up to you on how you do this, but again, I'm pulling it from the annual financial report, um, so it's easy for you to see how we're pulling, how we're getting those operating operation operating ratios. And I recommend you completing this yearly as it's an overview of your program. So here we have um, our total revenue. Whoops, looking in the wrong place. So our total revenue is right here. We have two million, over two million dollars here. So we're from your annual financial report, you're taking your food expense total and you're putting uh, the dollar amount here in the next, in the, can you see my, my okay, mm -hmm. sorry. <laughs> um, labor and benefits, your total expenses, equipment, total expenses, and other. And then you're dividing <clears throat> the food expenses divided by the total revenue uh, to get your percent, your operating ratios right here. Then you're adding those up and you're going to get a combined total there. So, for this first activity, <clears throat> I would like you to complete um, sample two uh, for me. So I'm gonna give you some time to go ahead and do that those calculations. I wish we had the Jeopardy theme song. <laughs> that would be fun. <laughs> 
<laughs> we have fun. We like to have fun here. <laughs> now I did um, in the activity uh, page handout that I sent, it is an Excel spreadsheet. Um, for those of you that know formulas, you can uh, create the formulas in the cells um, and have it automatically fill for you. Um, this is the first tab at the bottom of the activity page handout that says operating ratios as well. <clears throat> All right, then the next thing I'd like you to do um, actually, I probably should have told you these two at the same time. On a, example three, I would like you to take your take your an, annual financial report, um, and I want you to plug in your total revenue, put it in the box that says total revenue, and then do your total expenses for the year and fill in that as well and get your um, ratios. And I will be asking questions um, and calling on people if you don't raise your hand. Dave Roberts, Tina Fabian. <laughs> and you can unmute yourself. Oh, yes. And you can unmute yourself. You do have control of, for doing that as well. All right, so you guys, those of you that um, are still working on it, keep working. Um, but ex example two, um, can somebody tell me uh, the total um, percent of revenue for example two, what that ended up being? Do you wanna unmute yourself or raise your hand? Or type in the chat box. Can you see everybody? So I guess we can't see everybody if you're raising your hand. So I guess I'm going to say unmute yourself and go ahead and yell it out. Or if you type it in the chat, then Paula can read it out too. And I won't give your name. And she won't give your name. We don't shame. <laughs> I have a 39%. A th for food expenses, that is right. That great, excellent. Um, what about for labor and benefits? Sixty-seven. So um, with these, you want to round up. Um, I should have told you that the um, um, that is rounding principle. So you'll be round, rounding up on these. So it would actually be sixty-eight. But I can tell you know what you're doing. So yes. And then equipment was 1%, other was 6%. So who can, who, so what was the grand total with that? Can someone throw that in the chat or? Oh, 
Ooh, I heard someone on Dave. One, 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 one fourteen, I think. One fourteen is correct. Good job, thank you. Um, now, Dave, since you're unmuted, uh, for sample, well, for your, do you mind sharing? Did you finish sample three? Example three, your with your district. I did. Yeah. Okay. What you want to go through um, your numbers for me? Sure. Yeah. My my total revenue was one million five hundred eighty one thousand two hundred nine point zero five. And my food expenses were six hundred twenty one thousand seven twenty five, and that's thirty nine percent. My labor expenses were six six hundred thirty four thousand nine sixty four, and that's forty percent. My equipment was ninety nine thousand dollars two oh eight point seven three, that's six percent, and my other was ninety thousand. 474 uh, rounded up to 6%. And then the total? 91.47. Wow. That's pretty sweet. Okay. So again, um, can you just do the percentages for me from food expense, labor, and equipment, and other again, please? Yep. Food was 39. Labor was 40. Equipment was six and other rounds up to six. So perfect. So 91. About, about 92%, 91%. Yeah. 91. 91. Yeah. Yeah. 91 point. Yep. Yeah, 90. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Thank you for that. So the next slide, now that we have those, those numbers. So we have one, as you can see, the first one was the 82 um, percent. The next one was the 114. And then the third one was 91.4. And I'm going to plop this up here. I apologize. I didn't get all Dave's numbers. That's why I went back and asked the question again. <laughs> so, oh, did I go? What did I do? I lost you. I thought I put it right. Hold, hold on one second. My spreadsheet disappeared. Sorry about that. There we go. So those are our numbers. All right, so now we're going to, sorry about that guys. All right, so now we're looking at, what does this mean? So when monitoring these factors, you can determine if costs are within guidelines using the basic industry guidelines. Um, so, as you can see, you have the total, oops, my mouse is over here. Um, you have, if it's if less than 100%, and this is your, um, your total percent that we're looking at right here. Um, well, I'm sorry, at each, at, like food costs, if it's between 35 and 40%, um, that's where you want to be. That's the industry standard of where, uh, where you want to be. Labor costs around 50 to 55% and other costs of revenue are between five and 10%. And that's a hundred percent, that's breaking even. So less than a hundred percent, you're profitable. Equal to a hundred obviously is break even and more than a hundred percent is you're, you're losing money. So as we looked at, let me throw this back here. Oh, I guess we could have shrunk in that, shrink that. There we go. There, can you all see that? <laughs> all right, so I guess I should have left that up there. So this first one, um, this first example, it's pretty much all within industries. It's in within industri industry standards, 82%. Um, so you're making money. Um, labor and benefits is a little low from indus industry st standards um, as well. Example two, who can tell me, um, looking at this, what um, what they see? What the, What is this telling you in example two? Anybody want to share? Anybody? No, teachers? It looks like you're overstaffed. 
<laughs> You're right. Looks like we are overstaffed. <laughs> 68%. Um, that's where the problem is. So you're at 114%, you are, you're losing money. Um, so that's an indicate, indicator from this. You want to then dive into your labor and benefits and see, and see what happened, what you can do there. And benefits, unfortunately, usually isn't something you can't change. Um, that's pretty set in stone, but um, labor might be something that, um, you can, you can look at it and make a determination. I will say just from past experience, the benefit piece, usually schools are, um, it's a contract, but I'd like to, that's when it's probably good to, for you to be involved in the contract when they're talking about money, talking about, you know, raising the rates and um, you should probably be at the table so you can, um, you know, help with that and especially if it's going to increase you know increase your um labor and benefits so you are you are losing you know so you so you to show that you end up um losing money because of that piece so you want to have a seat at the table when they're under when they're negotiating or even before they they get to the negotiations just as as a side note um so looking at example three um Dave gave us an example. His was 91.4%. So again, he's pretty pretty close to breaking even, which is right where you wanna be. Uh, does anybody wanna share um, their number, what they ended up with? Um, not You don't have to necessarily tell me the food expenses, labor, equipment, but what's your grand total? Um, does any, Buddy, have any, can somebody share what they have for total? Or put it in the chat? Mine was 96. 96? Yeah. Wow, that's great. That's breaking <laughs> even. That's really good. Great. Anybody else? Bobby, did you start to say something? Yeah, um, we I ran 83, but we were really short staffed last year. <laughs> <laughs> I labor, my labor came in at 37%. Yeah, wow. Yeah, that is, you are definitely short staffed. Wow. Yeah, and I, and you know, unfortunately, that's what we heard from across the state is everyone's in that boat. Um, a lot of people are in that boat, not everybody, but. Uh, all right, so we are, we're going to talk about some of the, um, some more about what affects costs in the next slide. So let me throw the activity page over here. There we go. So factors that can affect your food costs. Um, Overproduction, waste, portion control, monitoring food costs, um, your inventory, uh, giving extra food, theft. Those are just some of some of the starters. Um, and then ways to lower food costs. So using the percentages um, that we just that we did, you can you can use that to set your uh, set your own. Uh, goal for managing your food, your food costs um, with that. Food costs like is one of the things that you we can change that we do have control over. Um, so that's one of the key key ones that we're going to talk about first. So uh, portion control. Uh, are you using the correct correct uh, scoop and serving lab uh, ladle when you're serving um, your meals? Um, are you using standardized recipes and production records to, co to communicate portion sizes with your staff? Uh, using forecasting from past menu uh, meal counts when ordering food. An example would be if you ordered five boxes of chicken nuggets, but you only use three boxes the day of service. Your next order, are you going to purchase five boxes again? 
So one would hope not because you're looking at your inventory to, uh, for those answers. Um, again, inventory, are you checking your inventory for, before placing your orders? This uh, chicken nugget, one that I just said, um, used to live two boxes in the freezer from the last time. Um, so you're not gonna, obviously not gonna order the five again. Um, keeping a good eye on inventory for theft. Is your food locked up? How, who has access to your inventory? So you don't know who's walking in your, in your kitchen. Um, I mean, you have, it depends on each school's different. So just watching the, you know, the theft. And the only way really you can check that is by your inventory. Leftovers, not allowing leftovers to be taken home will help deter staff from preparing extra food for the day. Um, you obviously usually do add a couple extra or, more, you know, extra for the day's meals, but you're not gonna double it, double your projected meal counts. Using cycle menus will help forecast meal counts um, is another way. Using USDA foods and NOI does play a role in cutting your food costs because you're getting meals at a discounted rate. Um, so just think those are just a few um, things to consider when you're looking at your food costs. Does anybody want to add anything to that? Any suggestions from those of you that have that watch your food costs? Um, Dave. One thing I, that I find helpful is I measure this every month for every school. So most of my managers are running a very similar food cost because we're on the same cycle menu typically. And it's around, you know, 42 to 44%. Um, so by sharing that information with them and they can see what their neighbor is running for food costs, they can share best practices sometimes. If they're up around 45, 50%, you know, they can maybe th take a deep dive and see what's happening. And, and again, sharing best practices can be helpful. That's a that's a great idea. I'm thinking, especially if you have multiple kitchen managers, you have a big district and you have, you know, five other schools and your managers are ordering the food and having that, using that as a tool to help that, that's that's a great, um, that's a great way to watch that and and keep an eye on it. That's really good. Any other suggestions or comments? All right. We're gonna talk a little bit about inventory. There are so many ways to track your inventory. Um, this is just one of the inventory contr control um, processes. As a general rule, you should be doing inventory uh, monthly to watch your costs. Uh, if you are not, if you're not having your kitchen staff complete monthly inventory, this is something you should probably start now. Uh, how many of you, I don't know if most of you have shut, shut your cameras off, but maybe in the chat, if you are doing monthly inventory, just throw like a yes um, in there. Um, this is when I should have had a poll. Have to learn that next time. <laughs> we'll learn that. We'll learn that. I probably should, should have said who is not doing it monthly. Paula's adding them up. As she's adding. Um, if you don't know what your inventory is, we talked about this in the other slide, how do you know what to order? Um, you can you use inventory for budgeting, uh, monthly, year to date, um, and yearly. All are, good, all are good practices to implement. So with this slide, I think. So okay. we, of the people who responded, uh -huh. we had seven yes. Okay. Six, and three who said they went quarterly. Oh, quarterly. Okay. Okay, good. So if, if, any, if anybody's out there, that's not, I, again, encourage you to be, um, to be starting uh, watching your inventory. So in this example here, 
um, you start off with your beginning inventory for the month. Um, you, the food purchases that you purchase for that month that you're like, say this is January or September start of the school year. So beginning of inventory is eight, that 8,000 food purchases for the month were 25,000 uh, food available. You add the two together, um, which is your 33,000. And then at the end of the month, um, you do your inventory. You redid your inventory and your inventory ending inventory was $10,000. So your cost of food used for the current for this month is 23,000. Um, the end of year, you can, this can be a rolling, rolling number. So you're adding the numbers um, through the month. Um, it's just a, this is, again, this is just a tool, another tool for you to use. And in my activity page, I do have a uh, blank inventory Excel document. Actually, it looks like looks like this um, uh, for you to utilize if you, if you choose to do so. The next um, thing we're the next item we're going to talk about is meal equivalents. Um, the conversion formula. So meal equivalents are used to convert your breakfast, snack, supper, and other non-food uh, sales, like a la carte, to an equivalent of one reimbursable school lunch. By converting the meals and other food sales to meal equivalents, you can determine meal cost, meal per labor hour, and the average revenue earned per meal for meal equivalent. Today, we're gonna to talk about meals per labor hour. Um, what are we for time? It's 2.05. It's 2.05, so we have been here an hour. No, we started. Oh, we started at one, oh, sorry. Boy, I was gonna say, that's really gone fast. <laughs> so we do have time. <laughs> sorry, it's been, you know, so. Uh, we'll keep going because if this was, depending on where we ended up, this would have been a good time to stop, but looks like we're making good time. So we're going to move on to the next slide. So these are our meal equivalent uh, formulas. So one lunch equals one meal equivalent, three breakfasts equals two meal equivalents or two thirds, 0.67, three snacks is one meal equivalent. And that's one third, 1.33. And a, one supper is one meal equivalent. Non-program food sales equal the revenue from non-program sales divi divided by the current free lunch reimbursement. And I did include 425. That is for free regular lunch rate, F24. Um, that does not include PBR or severe need just want want you to know if so if you if you do receive those two or one or the other you would add that to the 425 and then you're going to add your USDA food value per lunch so I added that rate as well for you um, and then if for using this in the future for F25 is 0.45 cents just as a heads up so now going into our next activity Calculating meal equivalents. I believe we have. Yep. Okay. I. So let me see. So we are going to review this chart first. So for this is this is an example for the month of January. Um, your total meal served is listed. So you would, you could pull that from your claim uh, per site of meal served if you don't have, if you're not keeping track of that in another way. So that is where you can find that information from your claim uh, reimbursement tab um, in at the site level. So for this school, uh, student lunches was 6,301. 
the conversion factor was one. And so that times one obviously is 6301. Adult lunch, same. It's a one conversion factor. So meal equivalent would be 10. Student breakfast, we serve 5,053 meals. We're going to times that by 0.67. And so the meal equivalent for that was 3,386. And then snacks was 150. And that conversion factor is 0.33. And that equals 50. And then supper is one for one. So that's 100. And then the nonprofits, non program food sales. Uh, they sold $125 for the month of January. So you're going to take your meal cost, which totaled, uh, I'm sorry, meal reimbursement rate of 462, which is a combination of USDA foods and the meal rate. And you're going to take 125 and divide that by 462. And that's 27 meal equivalents for a total meal equivalence of 9,853. Now, another, I'm gonna ask you another question. So if you served 562, actually, yep. So I'm gonna plop this up here. Okay. So if you, if, if a school served 562 breakfasts one morning, how many breakfast meal equivalents were served? So can anyone figure that out for me? And you can throw it in the chat, you can raise your hand. Um, and then while you're doing that, um, number two was if a school served 69 reimbursable snacks for the day in the after school snack program, how many meal equivalents were served in that? And then uh, the high school sold $450 in an a la, in a la carte for the day and convert the revenue sales to meal equivalents. So can I uh, make that just a little bit bigger. Yeah, I didn't. Yeah, I can. I just didn't want to. There we go. You just have two of them on here. <laughs> That's why. <laughs> That's okay. So does anybody have? The answer for number one, any takers? Not yet. Not yet. So you're gonna, so it was 562 meals. So you're gonna take 562 breakfast and times it by the conversion factor of 0. 0.67, which is right here. And that answer is 377 meal equivalents. And that is the answer that we were just given. And that's the answer we were just given. Good job. I wish I had like stars. All right, I'm gonna shoot a star at you. Okay, 69. Oh, I just um so I just read you the answer for number two. So oh no, I didn't. 69 reimbursable snacks for the day in the after school snack program. So how many meal equivalents? equivalents were served there. Do we have anybody on that one? Miss Paula? Not yet. Not yet. Ooh. Oh, 23 meal equivalent. 20. 23. 23? Did I? Oh, maybe I did it wrong. Let's see. Did I do it wrong? 69. So we have 69 meals times 0.33. It's 23 meals. I did a typo. Sorry. <laughs> Good job. All right. And 450 sales in a la carte. Does anyone have that answer? Oh, you can't see it. 97? 97. Thank you. 97. Three times. Three times. Good job. Oops. I clicked the button. Didn't even know it. All right. I didn't even realize I clicked the page. So. Jordy, can I ask a question? Yes, you may. I'm afraid. But yes. Yeah. Oh, no. So this, this form here. Is that still available on the website? I've been using this for some years now. It's yeah. We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna talk about that. Okay. Good. Awesome. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't want to get ahead. 
<laughs> yes, we are going to talk about that, Dave. Thank you. All right. So the next activity was for you to turn your your um, your meal served for the month into meal equivalents. Um, that is on I'm on this on the activity pages. Um, we'll keep if you want to work on that while we keep going. Um, so on the blank activity sheets in this handout is a blank is is where you'll find the blank one. Yeah, we'll uh, I may come back and ask some of those questions, but I want to keep going so we can finish this um, as we all right. So meal using meal equivalents to, to determine meals per labor hour. So we're going to use the chart that's listed there. Um, and this is for one, this is one month of school. So for this example, I've used at this school, we have seven staff and they work eight hours a day. So that's a total of 56 paid labor hours. And that's, oops, I'm over here, sorry. So that's where we've put the 56 because it's meal equivalents divided by the paid labor hours is the formula. And the meal equivalents was 530. And you can see that from right down here, uh, 530 is listed under the meal equivalents. So you're gonna calculate the current total hours of labor labor paid daily in the program. Again, that was 56. You're gonna calculate the average number of meal equivalents served daily, and that's the 530 that we have here. And then you're gonna do the calculation, 530 divided by 56, and your answer is five. I mean, sorry, that's not a five, that's a nine. Nine. <laughs> the chart at the bottom, so we looked at the 530 meal equivalents. So that, um, tells us that average meal per day, 530, that scratch cooking target is 16 and the uh, convenience target is 19. Um, we are gonna, so that is this example. I want you to know how to do it by hand per se. Uh, before we jump into what Dave just talked about. And that is what we, we have on our website. And I'm going to go there so I can show you where it where it's located. All right. So I'm on our main Department of Education website under programs for NSLP. I'm going to go down to management forms, and here is the meals per worker hour and goals. So this is the sheet that you're gonna click um, and go into, and I have that right here. So this is what it looks like. Uh, the first is the instructions, and then the second is the tool. So we have, there's a lot more, information here than um, than what we, so you can do this um, monthly, put your name of your school in. So I'm gonna use the data that we just had. So 462 was for the lunch, the number of days, um, Oh, actually, enrollment for the school. So some of this data you didn't have before. So 400 enrollment for the school. The lunch rate was 462. Number of serving days, 19. Number of student lunches, 6401. Enter breakfasts is 5053. And number of adult meals was 10. 
Number of adult breakfast was zero. A la carte, a la carte dollars was 125. And then the, our meal, our labor hours, we said was 56. So I, what I did here, just want to make sure so you under, so you can see where I pulled it from. So supper, where supper and um, student lunches are the same one conversion factor, adult lunches, I combined them and added it to the student lunches. I mean, I'm sorry, not adult, supper, sorry. Supper from the original, whoops, from the original um, chart was on there. So I added the supper meal equivalents, the supper, no, the, sorry, the supper no, total meal served with the student lunches is what you would do. All right, so for this, so what does this, what does this mean? So here we have the average. So this is a little bit different because in this example from what we just did, there was no snacks. The after school snack pro program is not included in here. So your numbers are gonna be a little bit off because that is not included in here. So the average meals per day was 514, which is right here. Um, meals per worker hour is nine right here. Uh, so we're 514 again, like we had in the other one. So it's between 16 and 19. So that is where your target should be. Uh, so what does this tell you? So if it, if this, if this is saying that we should have, have between 16 to 19 meal per worker hours, but we're at nine for this school. What is that? Do you, does anybody know what that means? What that, what that is saying? Dave? <laughs> yeah, you got the, uh, might want to cut that staffing number almost in half. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she might want to cut that staffing down. <laughs> I'm sorry, go ahead. Yeah, you probably, if you cut it in half, you'd be pretty close to where you need to be, I think. Yes. And this was a wonky, uh, a wonky one, but it's a good one that shows quite, you know, but a good, a good deviation from what it should be. So you don't want to make any big decisions <laughs> right away. You're not going to go in and uh, fire your staff, you know, you, but you, this, you definitely want to take a really good look at this and um, think about what you need to do here. Cause obviously you have way more staff, but the, some of the other things to think about is, is this a central kitchen? Um, you know, is, is the reason why there's more staff here is because they're sending meals out to, to many schools. Um, so there, that's something that you need to be looking at. Um, so, but the big thing is, is to be consistent with this and to make sure you know why it's happening. Like if I said, if it's a central kitchen, that could be your reasoning why, but you, you really need to dive in and look if there's something that you need to look at for the school. Um, um, but you should probably do it per school. And the other thing is, uh, what was I gonna say? Um, also depends on what equipment you have, you know, are you, you don't have a Roboku where you can slice everything up. So you're having people do it. Um, your staff do it. Well, it takes obviously a lot longer to be cutting up vegetables by hand than using a piece of equipment to do that. So there are many things that you need to look at as well. Um, so you're not, like I said, you're not going to jump in and totally, um, fire somebody <laughs> hopefully, uh, but it, this is a tool to use. All right, so, okay. So that, and this is the one I just, oh, I guess I had it here. I, this is what I just put in the chart that you had just seen. Um, I am gonna send the slides out um, with my notes on it as well um, for you. So th some things that can affect your labor costs uh, not following a uh, scheduled work time, you know, allowing for overtime, um, high wage, high benefit costs, uh, too many labor hours, size of operation, number of serving lines. 
scheduling of lunch periods, amount of a la carte items, the skill level of your employees and complexity of the menu. And like I said, equipment, those are all um, things that can affect that. So then the last thing that I wanted to do is um, for you to do off, you can do this on your own, but it's your action steps. Like, what are you going to do? Uh, you know, what are your financial goals? What are you looking to change? What are you looking to add to? Do you not have any financial goals? Um, take a, you know, look at that. Um, then you're going to list the steps to achieve that goal. And then who do you need to help you achieve that goal? It may be, you know, your kitchen manager, you're going to, you know, need them to start doing some reporting like Dave does um, with his school, uh, you know, different things like that. So who are you going to, who are, who do you need to help you achieve that? It could be your business manager, making sure um, you're getting your monthly um, reports on your meals. When, back when we had, I mean, food, food sales and your labor costs, um, back when we had Neo, a lot of this information was we had to do that monthly. So we were keeping up on that monthly. Now with the CMP web, we asked for it yearly. And what what we don't want to have happen is uh, nobody's checking this stuff. Nobody's looking at their inventory. You know, we don't want that to happen. Um, you, you are in charge of your program. You want to be fiscally responsible for your program. You don't want your program to go in the, in the red. Um, so it's important that um, you are looking at at this stuff where it's not, you know, you're not you're not doing it monthly to to report to us what what your numbers are. So just bringing this uh, to your attention, um, Dave. Did you have any? I saw you unmuted. Did you have any questions or comments? Yeah, I was just going to say that um, one thing that can be very helpful if you're diligent about measuring these things, and you, if, in my example. At least a couple of my schools, that labor percentage was really low, below the industry standard. So that helped me to speak to the um, business manager and superintendent th during the budget process, why I was adding hours at targeted locations. Exactly. That's a great and that and uh, the great use of the of this of exactly. So you can defend your program by these tools. Um, you can show why you're doing what you're doing and you have the backup document documentation to show it. It could be that you need your school isn't there's no participation. So you it shows that you need more participation in your schools. So what do you what steps are you going to make to increase your participation? So does anybody else have any other questions or thoughts or things that have worked in their district that you might want to share with the rest of the team? I know there's many of you that are on this call that have a lot of experience and are doing great things in their district. Um, Tina, did you want to share something? I'll just share if um, your labor's hours are too high, maybe talk to your staff about what it means for participation and try to encourage them to work on improving their meals, survey students and find out what they may want to increase participation to justify keeping those labor hours. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. If they want to keep their job, <laughs> you know, you need those because you can't, like we've talked to you, you can't control um, labor and benefit usually. Well, you can with your hours, but benefits, usually that's the tricky one is, but yeah, that's participation. What can you do to increase participation? Um, and surveying the kids, that is really, it's, that's a great idea or ask them what they want to eat. You know, well, that's that's what you're doing. Asking them what yeah. they want to eat, what their favorite thing is that you do serve. Um, obviously, I'm actually in, I'm in the process of um, organizing a student focus group. So maybe have two two or three students from each grade level, and try to meet with them and talk to them about the meals and what they'd like to see. Awesome! That's great. That's a great great idea. Anything else? Anybody else want to share anything? Nope. All right. Well, I will, we will be sending out the PowerPoint for this uh, for you to have as well. And probably, I think everyone did receive the spreadsheet, but if um, the activity sheet, if you did not get that, then we can send that to you as well. 
Thank you all for joining me today. Um, the other thing I would like to ask if there, I again, I have an upcoming one in May. Uh, if you want, if there's anything you would like me to talk about, like me to go over, give me any ideas. Um, if you want to just shoot me an email and, uh, you know, give me any thoughts or ideas. I want to do what is beneficial to help you. Um, so please send me your request. That'd be great. And thank you all and have a great rest of your day.